What's up, Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Bite for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. This is the episode where we're going to break down everything we know and expect to see at Apple's iPhone event that's taking place on September the 12th at the Steve Jobs Theater at Apple Park. And guess what? It's the very first time they'll be holding an event at their shiny new campus. So let's jump into everything we've heard in Apple Byte Nation. If you've been watching, you know about 99% of this stuff, but guess what? I know you're still watching. I see you. Okay, first up, it's the 10th anniversary iPhone, and it's still unclear exactly what they'll call it. Reputable leaker Evan Blass says he's heard iPhone X, a name you heard us throw out there before people were talking about it as an option. Case makers at IFA in Berlin were changing their iPhone case SKU names to iPhone 8 and iPhone 8 Plus for the lower tier phones and using iPhone Edition for the 10th anniversary phone. Now that's one of the few true unknowns that we'll find out at the keynote with Blast saying that pre-orders will happen on September the 15th with the phone releasing at stores and shipping on September the 22nd. Now it's obviously the 10th anniversary iPhone that everyone is waiting for. It will be the first major design change the iPhone has seen in about three years with Apple finally moving to a 5.8 inch OLED display with a minimal four millimeter bezel around its curved glass edges. The biggest change will be the complete removal of a physical home button. It won't be on the backside of the iPhone either. And according to Bloomberg, we'll see the introduction of a software dock similar to the iPad running iOS 11 that will include different gesture controls to open and close apps or for multitasking. Now, how will functionality like Touch ID and Apple Pay be replaced? Well, according to reports, the chin at the top of the phone will house a 3D facial scanning sensor that will unlock your phone as well as authenticate purchases. Bloomberg's Mark Gurman says Apple will pitch Face ID as faster, more secure, and more accurate than Touch ID, and it will have to be to keep Apple loyalists very happy. Now, details in an earlier HomePod firmware leak also indicate it might be able to detect your face while laying flat on a table surface, and a feature to tap to wake your phone found on Android phones could be coming to the iPhone as well. This 3D facial recognition feature will be the centerpiece of this phone, and we still don't really know exactly how it works, but you can be sure Apple isn't going to let you unlock your phone with a picture from another phone like the Galaxy S8 and Note 8 still do. As for the chin at the top of the phone, get used to it. Apple doesn't plan on trying to hide it. The status bar will be split into left and right sides. The Cupertino kids internally call them ears, the left side will display time while the right side shows Wi-Fi and cellular connectivity according to reports. Now the deep blacks of the OLED screen will allow it to blend together with the ears at times. The ears can reportedly change depending on the app, but they will be noticeable on the home screen with wallpapers that are not dark or during app usage. Okay, the new iPhone will get an all new 10 nanometer A11 processor that looks like it will just beast any other phone on the market today, like you saw what the iPad Pro could do, right son? Well, wireless charging is also expected to come to the new iPhone with purported leaked photos showing off its internal components with a wireless charging coil inside. Reports have also said the actual wireless charging accessory will be hard to get and will potentially be available after the phone is released at a later time with a software update around iOS 11.1. Now the headphone jack won't be coming back, that's a no-brainer, and improved IP68 water and dust protection are expected as well. We'll see three new phones at the keynote, successors to the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus, and the 10th anniversary iPhone, you know this. And a new leak from Benjamin Geskin shows two purported SIM card trays that are made to match the color of the iPhone's body. We might see colors specific to the anniversary edition like this new blush gold that is different from the previous rose gold along with silver and black. Now the new iPhone X or the iPhone edition or future iPhone whatchamacallit is expected to be priced around $1,000 at a starting price but we'll find out all the official details in just under a week. Now that's not the only thing we expect to see at Apple's September event. The Apple Watch Series 3 will be announced as well. We aren't expecting to see a major form factor or design change, but the biggest change will be the addition of LTE to allow the watch to work independently from your phone with its own data connection. Now reports say direct calling may not be available for the LTE Apple Watch, but the ability to use VoIP services like Skype and FaceTime audio might be the option instead. New activity tracking support has been revealed through the HomePod firmware leak as well, including things like dancing, bowling, equestrian, and you know, ball so hard, basketball, like what crossover dribble, okay. Now the biggest question is, has Apple addressed battery life? It's what reportedly held them off from releasing LTE in last year's Series 2 Apple Watch. We'll find out. 
Also, the 4K Apple TV is expected to be announced, but there are lots of questions surrounding it before its release. 4K is nice, and we should expect it will be running at least an A10 processor, like it's about time. But what 4K content will actually be supported? A Wall Street Journal report says Apple and movie studios have been battling over pricing for 4K versions of movies to be sold on iTunes. Now, Apple wants to sell them at the same $19.99 price point that new HD releases get on iTunes, while the studios want to charge $25 to $30 for a 4K version of movies on iTunes. There's been no resolution to this yet, and Apple is reportedly scrambling to get it done for this keynote. Now, Apple also announced the Amazon Prime Video app would be coming to Apple TV back in June at WWDC, but a recent report says the app may not make it in time as well. That's two potential sources of 4K content being left out for the 4K Apple TV. We have to, at the very least, be able to instantly throw 4K video from our phones to the TVs through the new Apple TV, so that's something that the last model couldn't do. But if you're selling a 4K Apple TV, you better have more than a few Netflix shows to support it. And you know what? Apple knows this too. All right, this keynote would also be a great opportunity to feature a new and improved Siri. We didn't get it at WWDC, and I hope Apple shows us how Siri has evolved because it's good, but it's not great, and it doesn't match up favorably to the competition from Amazon and Google. Could we get more news about the HomePod? Maybe an official release date, and you know, some new bells and whistles. And if I had to pick a sleeper product that could surprise us, Apple isn't going to release a new version of the AirPods anytime soon. You know, they're still four weeks on back order, so in my mind, it's not gonna happen. I could be wrong. But maybe Apple drops a new color in product red or even black for the AirPods. Like, that might be the second biggest news after the new phone if they do the damn thing. Now, Apple's September 12th keynote starts at 10 a.m. Pacific time. We'll have all of our CNET Live pre-show and post-show coverage right here on CNET, live stream and YouTube starting at 9 a.m. Pacific, one hour before the keynote. And you know what? We'll be taking your live calls during the pre-show and post-shows. This is a big one for Apple, and there will be so much to talk about. I'm excited, and I'm sure you are too, unless you've already had these features in your Android phone for a few years. And I know, some of you just got mad at me for saying that, but come on, Apple Byte Nation, grow a pair. That's going to do it for this week's show. You can email us at theapplebyte at cnet.com or tweet me at Brian Tong. We'd love to hear what you're thinking before the keynote. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll catch you all next time for another bite of the apple.